safety.tv. Welcome back to the Australian Beach Ultimate Championships here in Coolangatta on the Gold Coast. My name is Oakley Mar uh my name was Oakley Mullen, my name is now Oakley Ryden, and I am joined by Max Stenstrom, and we are going to bring you the game between Extinction Archaeopteryx and the AU Coast. Thanks, Oakley. I'm glad you got um, my name right, even if you couldn't get your own right. Um, speaking of names, big shout out to AU Coast. You know, I thought I'd seen it all when it came to bad puns in Frisbee team names, but... These guys have found another one that I hadn't seen before. Very smart. Hopefully at some point we can get a close-up of one of their jerseys and you'll see what I'm talking about. And Arche Archaeopteryx out to a quick start with the high-release forehand. Looking for Kid. But that one was a bit of a hospital pass. And it gets swatted away. AU Curry is going to bring be bringing this one in. Uh, Aponte picking it up. Puts the break up straight away to Armstrong. Oh, great grab over the top of the pack there from Milu. To Georgiades, back to Milu. Gets it back again. Oh, just, just goes past the outstretched hands there of Aponte. It's a lovely passage of play, the give go up this near sideline. Milo getting every second one, setting up a nice looking deep shot, but just a touch too far. As Archaeopteryx brings it back in. Looking to open their account. Setting up in this 2-3 hurry, we've seen a lot of it. As Gordon comes up in it underneath. We talked about her a bunch earlier today, but that's cut out well by AU Coast. And now They've got a short field to work with. They find a shot through the centre. And too far out in front. Armstrong just misses it to Milo there. So it's a bit of contact, but uh, all fair play. Just go, go back. And that'll be Archaeopteryx with the disc. Up to Archaeopteryx, one of the two extinction teams here at Brisbane Club, and they're growing and putting a lot of effort into the mix, and they got two teams here. As the send, that shot goes long. Oh, and just down this that far sideline, just hard to do. Not a lot of space to work with. Rob, you were telling me earlier, and I've already forgotten, what is an Archaeopteryx? Uh, it was a landmark fossil that's fine. It's a, one of the m a very complete fossil of a very avian dinosaur. So it's one of the reasons that we know dinosaurs to be avian. You know, big long legs and tiny arms. There you go. Learn something new every day. Yeah, dinosaurs were all so covered it's with... It's like with a bird feathers. dinosaur, essentially. Yeah, well, dinosaurs are ancient birds, basically, and we're probably covered with feathers not scales or anything. So Jurassic World has been lying to me this whole time. Yeah, dude, pop culture. Not quite an accurate reflection of reality. Who'd have thought it? You know what is an accurate reflection of reality? This live stream of actual Frisbee that's happening right now. It's really good as well. This is really like the simplicity and beauty of these AU jerseys. Out of that huck, out of that grab. Ah. Mellow with the outside in shot. Beautifully arcing onto the chest of his receiver. He shot one of those earlier and didn't complete, but clearly just was fine shooting, calibrating his throws. And if at first you don't succeed, try again. And he is rewarded there with a goal and opening up their account.
This is a Queensland matchup, so Extinction, a club from Brisbane, but AU Coast of locals here on the Gold Coast, of course. AU, the chemical symbol for gold. Very nerdy team names in this particular matchup. We'll see whether that home ground advantage, their familiarity with the Coolangatta sand, makes any difference. As they send the pull downfield. Extinction working it well now. Taking their time. Just playing sort of three back, usually only one isolated cut, occasionally with two, but uh, playing quite it. Yeah, wide and distributed, and as I say that, an unforced error. As AU Coast bring it back in on this near side. Eventually shoots deep to Lennon, but it sails over his head as he loses his footing. Yeah, that's an interesting shot there. He's got a keep it in, so it's going to be curling away from the sideline, uh, away from the camera in his perspective. And his receiver was ready for it to drop right down on his head, so bit of a misread, maybe wasn't expecting it. It's tie window regardless. And Archaeopteryx looking to go the other way. Starting well. Their continuation looks good here. Shots on. Oh, and it goes and he's going. He's got to go left here. He's got to take it. He's got to, oh no, just can't hold his feet for the bid. Ben O'Day looking to move it quickly, immediately picks up and then walks slowly to the front of the end zone. Has McAlpin underneath. He goes underneath to Lennon. Immediately wants it back up line. Nice bid to keep it alive. Examines his options, just staring downfield. Stall count rising. Forced to do nothing. It's a stall call and uncontested. Been a few uncontested stalls so far through this tournament. Something that we don't see a whole lot of usually. Yeah, I think so. The timing is the same. It's still 10 seconds, but I think the difference in the time it takes players to make cuts and get open on the beach has really thrown a few people. People are probably used to looking off three or four options in a 10-second window, whereas perhaps on beach it's only one or two real proper cuts that there is time to develop in that 10 seconds. Oh, that's just a lovely work of art. Car leaping into the end zone there. And just a well-placed disc in front of him. That's a tricky shot, that inside flick. Uh, and it's heading across field as well. It's hard to get it to sit up nicely, but Archaeopteryx showing their class. Hitting Car on the chest, making it very easy for him. And that's one apiece. Excellent. It's good to see this game Looking pretty crisp out of the gates. Amelia Yap respecting the camera. What a hero. Truly really doing the Lord's work. We did have a bit of rain here this morning and some overcast conditions, but this afternoon the sun's come out a little bit more, a bit more blue skies showed up. And Coolangatta is finally delivering the weather we've been promised, which is lovely. Finally, it's what I came for, really. Quality freezing, quality weather. See Alan Kidd with the disc on the left-hand side. He's one of a number of players going to be representing Australia at the Under-20 World Championships in Canada later this year. Truly an up-and-coming superstar. He was on stream earlier showing his incredible pace to great effect. We'll see whether that becomes a factor again in this game. As AU Coast making it harder than it probably needed to be to center that pull. And now they find space through the middle. I'll go backwards to Prahalad and unable to complete the simple pass will give Archaeopteryx a short field turn from prime position. We'll look to punish here. Barnes with a disc. Oh, a lovely around break by just pulled in short, and that's batted away effectively. Redemption for Prahalad. Caused the turn, but gets it straight back. Net neutral. Amazing. And Laurie Rogers will walk to the disc to bring it back in. Operating out of a, ho a horizontal stack, that 2-3 that we've been talking about a lot. Moxie comes, thinks about coming across the front, but they don't look to him. And Rogers with the disc again. Thrown off the knees. It's very creative. 
Looking for the dump, struggling to get much out. And in the end, another cheap turnover, really. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see if uh, AU Coast have the kind of efficient and consistent dump reset that can sort of fuel their offense and get that going. It's just been a bit haphazard so far as Barnes looks long, but Kid had already turned under for that one. So just a bit of a miscue on the long shot there. It's definitely the kind of receiver you want to be looking for. On the plus side, AU Coast will have to work the full length of the field giving Archaeopteryx plenty of opportunities to earn back the Frisbee. Yeah, they've effectively been able to get blocks so far. You can see Kidd and Villas doing some great switching on the unders. Moxie to Rogers. She'll work it underneath. Looks back to Prahalad. Back to Rogers, struggling to get a shot off now. Stall count rising. Has to force yeah. one to Moxie, but it's... Straight to Alan Kidd, so it's a good knockdown by him. But there's, yeah, full credit to the Arche Archaeopteryx defense. Getting another uncontested stall out. A lot of good spirit on display today. Spines is the disc again, and they're really staring down the barrel here. Oh, Kidd on this close sideline. Kidd goes around to Villas. Villas with the disc. Nice and patient here. There's a lot of cuts, a lot of movement. Kidd again, not gaining much. Taking a lot of time and Kid shoots to Villas and Villas and Kid putting in a lot of work out the front there. And Archaeopteryx with the goal. Villas got plenty of pace to spare and you can see it there as he went up line. Nothing fancy, no fancy footwork, just running a straight line quicker than the other guy. And you'll get the disc. And he does. He yeah. got a timeout call. It's a nice early timeout call. So we've seen uh, teams use the timeout. Of course, only getting only get one here. Uh, seen them use that in a variety of different ways. But the I've really liked the offensive timeout in this scenario. So just gone down a few points, and they want to stop the other teams rolling, reset themselves, and then see if they can attack the game. Because in a 45-minute game, you really can't be yielding a large lead because there's just not the time there is to get a bunch of breaks and claw your way back into a game. And as we speak, the heavens are starting to open despite the sun as it's starting to, to sprinkle down. Remember, that's what the timeout was about. Just having a quick check of the bomb radar. Right now, it's indicating water falling from the sky. But just lightly. I can't imagine it'll have too much of an effect on the play. No, I would be much more worried if there's the sea breeze in the afternoon picks up. It's sort of light, um, but it has affected a few throws. I think basically the teams that are able to play effective disciplined ultimate move the disc around the field and attack a variety of spaces are less susceptible to the wind. Even if their throwing skill is comparable to the other teams, it's teams that are have a, I guess, a less disciplined offense or are able to space the field less effectively that are forced into more difficult shots in tighter windows and that's when the wind really c comes into play. We were talking about that earlier this morning when Frizz Baywatch was playing. They were demonstrating some really disciplined offensive play, having one cutter cutting into big spaces at a time, which added to their margin for error when throwing in these sometimes blustery conditions. Yeah, and that's one of the principles that we'd normally see applied on grass frisbee but on the beach it's also very difficult to exploit large spaces like that because everyone is just so much slower so it requires a really deft touch to be able to put the disc out in front and have it sit there in time for a streaking receiver can't just put it up in the air and assume that they'll run onto it no there's definitely a recalibration required for what would usually be a leading throw on, on grass and nearly well, I can confidently say all the players here are playing more grass, frisbee, than beach. Yeah, I'd say that's largely true. However, you can see the difference in the players here that have represented Australia uh, at large beach competitions. For example, Beach Worlds. There's just a little bit of more familiarity with the pace and space of that game. P speaking of space, it's getting a little clogged up right now. We had a couple of cutters in just within a couple of metres of the disc. They have to squeeze a little inside forehand to McAlpine. We'll get it straight back. He has. He will shoot deep. He's got players underneath, but 
McCarthy. Unable to pull it in, Armstrong, as it sailed over ahead. Slight misread in this wind. Yeah. I can't mind putting a lot of shape on his throws, really blading in quite intensely. Don't know if that's going to work very well. But Extinction... Hand block, immediate redemption for Armstrong. She wasn't able to reel in McAlpine's throw, but is able to get the turn back for her team. About 15 metres out in the centre of the field. This is kind of where you want to be from an offensive perspective as Ben O'Day finds McAlpine underneath. McAlpine really being the pivot of this offense. Day goes round with a lovely backhand. Great bit at it, but just not enough today. So Archaeopteryx pushing their way downfield yet again. Sims is going to bring the disc in. And see them, looks like they're playing two boys behind and three girls upfield. So interesting to see them use that split as the shot goes up. And that is an unbelievable shot. And Rachel Seawin Royal was in an absolute paddock of space. There was no one around her, and the shot was everything that it needed to be. Beautiful out in front of her, able for her to run onto it. We were talking about that deft touch required, and we saw it just there as Carr finds his target beautifully. I think it's been noticeable even just in today how much players have adapted to the, the different conditions playing on beach. We saw this Archaeopteryx team play earlier this morning on the stream. And already you can see they're throwing. It's just tightened up a little bit since then as they opt for the hammer pull. Works pretty well. And gets them all away. It doesn't roll too far, but AU Coast have centered the disc and have gotten out of the way. An immediate no look block. Yeah, it didn't realize it was there, but then the shot goes up, yaps behind it. Oh, she can't quite reel that one in, but she gets deep into it, and the throw just, just too far for her. A little hasty, perhaps. Got oh. a bit of white line fever or. Blue line fever, as the case may be, in this field. AU Coast get another opportunity, another chance. This horizontal stack giving plenty of space for players to head deep if they wish. Rogers with the disc. Fakes off a few options. Doesn't like a lot of what she's seeing downfield. Likewise, as it comes back to Aponte, he'll shoot deep. Kids in, in the action and takes it early. Yeah, she's done. He's done very well. Take position early there. Saw the disc wasn't curling the way the thrower intended or to that break side, but in fact, flattened out and sat down on the open side. And Kid was all over that. Despite giving up a couple of inches to Mello, the the superior read and positioning meant that Kid able to make short work of that. Kid, no slouch in the air. Archaeopteryx, see if they can get it done this time. High defensive work, but pass on it with the disc. Goes around, finds the Yap. Yap not liking her options. Oh, Kid open in the middle with an amazing diving grab. Miller coming past at shoulder height. There's an excitement generated in this match here. Personen's got it. He's got cutters very, very deep. Kid plants, turns, gets the under yet again. Parsonen's taking off, Kid puts it in the air. It's got the right edge on it, it's dropping in. Oh, and he can't quite make the grab. Can't reel it in. His defender, Aponte, had given up, had nothing left in his legs and was just standing and watching. Yeah. All he had to do was get there. Looked good from here. I think he was maybe a bit too concerned about that back line of the end zone and just his eyes were down a bit, couple of slow steps and then it was millimeters out of reach. Ponte now with an opportunity to capitalize. Mello in the center. It's a great battle between himself and Alan Kidd. Both working very hard. Yeah, it's definitely, they've definitely bought into the matchup. We're going to see what they can do. Is AU Coast just give it away cheaply? And Extinction haven't shown an ability to clinically punish these offense. I think it's taken them a few tries, but 
Same can be said for AU Coast. So they're at least they're in a commanding position here. Parsonen with the disc. Goes around a cheeky shot. Allen Kidd, they make it happen this time. And that's a one pass goal. Extinction. Lovely throw there. Kidd, of course, using his pace, going to that break side, but credit to the throw. Makes it easy for him. Absolutely. Full credit to the throw to get around and get that break shot off, and that's the quick punish we were looking for. So I think the team that's more, ab more able to just very, very quickly punish after some defensive turns is going to have the edge in this game, and Extinction have shown they can do that all the way to 4-1. Every point hard-earned, though. It, it doesn't feel like AU Coast are getting rolled over at all. Absolutely, and it's still early days here. We're about 20 minutes into what is a 45-minute match. So AU Coast want to be changing something soon. This point's been going on for a while, so I'm predicting this to be not an incredibly high-scoring game. So it might be like a long grind, and who can hold it out for the longest? AU Coast want to start to be adjusting now. They don't want to let... Extinction out to too much of a lead before they decide to inject themselves into the game. We are playing with the uh, World Games gender rule, as it's often known, where we have two points of three women followed by two points of three men, and that alternates continuously. Big fan. Gives you 50% every time. McAlpine zips an inside flick. Oh, well read. Trying to thread a needle, but can't get it done. Great work from Gordon to just have that heads up. See that shot coming. Wasn't going to hurt a player, but you can see it, and you can make a difference there. As the shot goes up, going the other way. Starks under the disc, but his defender just oh. has the pace. Seals him out. Matthew Lennon turns on the burners and chews up that deficit. And in the end, seals his player out. And lets the disc go to ground. But let's talk about Gordon a little more. She's been doing a bunch of work for Arche Archaeopteryx. And she's also a young player that's been on the, the youth scene. And oh. in the sights of juniors tournaments ahead. She's only 16. And yet mixing it at Beach Nationals. Wow, incredible. Hey, you coast. Managed to reel in a specky one. But they have the disc now. And there's a little pressure building. But... Stable offense out from the end zone. McAlpine surveys the options. Puts that arcing forehand we've talked about before. It's a bit of a pack grab, hospital pass. There will be a call after it gets battered down. McAlpine's not happy with that throw. We talked about the shape that he's getting on them earlier. We'd probably like that to sit a little less and be a touch more direct. It's never really a great throw when you get a pack of four or five underneath it. McAlpine's been doing a lot of the heavy lifting in terms of aggressive shot taking for the AU Coast team. Someone's got to get it done as we're having a real nice long chat about this and everybody gets to be heard, which is a bit nice, but gives people a bit of time to rest which I'm sure is very appreciated. A lot of these long points take it out of your legs on sand in a way that doesn't happen on the, on the, on the grass. It looks like the call in the field's uh, contested, so just go, go back to where it was. McAlpine will get another chance. He's probably happy about that, to be honest. Yeah, he's got to have the discipline here. He's clearly one of the stronger players on this AU team and he's been doing a lot for them so far, but he really needs to reel in it in, keep it disciplined, and use his powers for good this front of the end zone. Can't just be demanding the disc and stifling the flow of the team. So let's see if we can do what his team needs of him here. It can be a difficult balance to strike, knowing that your, your role is to be that primary shot taker and yet to still make good decisions with the disc. As Armstrong swings it to O'Day. O'Day goes to Lennon. Lennon goes that around backhand to O'Day. Unreal. O'Day and Lennon doing a great lot of work there. Lennon showing his prowess with some break throws numerous times throughout this game. And O'Day just consistently open on that break side. And now he gets that goal. That's 
Really great work and really sustained offense from them. Closing the gap, that's 4-2. Extension up. Generating a lot of movement and tempo from the handler space and then converting that into downfield position. Uh, yeah, so it's been interesting to see this AU Coast offense. So there's usually on each of the lines, there's at least two or three players who are quite comfortable uh, resetting the disc and, and moving it in, in a short space. Um, and sometimes they've relied on that to get quite far, but other times they've been able to do that for a little bit and then pop it out into a longer shot to one of their other receivers. Defensively, it's been pretty vanilla this game. Just lots of one-way match. We'll see if... Yeah, I think that's one of the interesting things because a lot of these players are used to playing grass. Uh, these teams don't necessarily have uh, free set zones ready to go. Of course, 5-on-5, five five, different to the standard 7-on-7. Seven seven, so there's just... You can play a zone. It's a bit... Uh, you just have to adjust the positions a bit. But just the nature of the pace of the game changes things a lot. It's very, very difficult to contain... Um, and cut across the field after you've been broken. So, pretty high risk, high reward, but ball has got to get it done. And they'll chat about this disc. Extinction will bring it back right on the front of the end zone. Coming out in this 2 3 offense here. And we're away. Oh, goes up the line, manages to complete that one. Car with the disc. Car shoots long. That is an unreal grab. Can she back it up with the patience here? Goes back to Parson. Parson's got the disc, looks inside. Unreal. It is Grab City. Extinction. Huge plays being made. Doing what they have to do to keep it alive. And just with a very regular day at the office attitude about this extinction team, they've been doing quite a few good things. That was a really good offensive possession. And that was that same connection from Carr to Royal that we saw earlier. Yeah, Royal's a lovely been, goal going the other way. Royal's been tearing this game up. She took that unbelievable grab and then had the patience to just dump it and then go and get the goal. So it's great to see from her. She's putting it in a clinic, and but just looks unfazed. I think this extinction team are in a pretty good mindset at the moment. You can see they're confident, but they're calm. They're not like they're getting lackadaisical or slipping off. This is the kind of attitude they want to have, and it's going to maintain their consistent play, enable them to, at the very least, hold and maybe build this lead going later into the game. AU Coast with all the work to do in terms of changing the momentum and the direction of this game. They've struggled to reliably maintain possession of the disc and convert that possession into goals. The Archaeopteryx uh, defense doing a lot of great work forcing turnovers. As Ponte fields the pull, looking to keep the tempo high feeling like that's where they can be successful. That around backhand to the far side. It's been valuable for them. The forehand through the center makes plenty of yards. Has to go backwards, showing nice patience to Giorgiatis. Aponte. Oh, and that's heartbreaker. Leonard did a lot of good work there. Yeah, that's just straight through the hands. That could be costly when they look back on it. It's mistakes like that where you don't really have anyone else to blame but yourself. You can't credit to the defense. It's just a simple mistake and a very cheap turnover on what should have been a goal. Let's see what the AU coach defense can bring. Gordon has the disc here. This extinction offense looking all right. Oh, Villas under pressure and McAlpine with a block there. McAlpine moving it quickly, comes near side. Gordon through the with hands. yet another block. Unbelievable. She is stamping her impact on this game here. Oh, it's got a look to shoot. That's got a lot of float on it. Oh, it's coming back towards the receiver. Beautifully done. People got to be streaky. You can't leave her alone down there. She puts that one up. And Villas gets out in the front of the end zone. Extinction do an amazing job of playing some end zone defense there. And managed to advance it through Gordon going up the field. AU Coast had two opportunities that were literally as good as, you, good as gold. But they just were not able to finish the process. Once was straight through the hands and another was a great defensive effort from Annie Gordon. 
And in the end, Archaeotrix, clinical, ruthless once they get that possession. Converted into another goal for them. And that's what we talked about. They wanted to play this consistent offense. They've been doing it thus far. They've got their relaxed but confident, um, not distracted. So we can see some teams just really enjoying a day out of the beach here at this tournament. Uh, sometimes enjoying it so much that affects their ultimate playing ability. But Extinction, credit to them, managing to keep the focus and keep the intensity required just to be just, just a little bit better than this AU team so far. And O'Day will take the disc from the brick mark. Has Mello in the center. With Rogers behind. Provides support if he needs it. Mello on car. Comes underneath and immediately gets the disc. Oh. And now on over the, the head of Rogers who can't hold on. The Apple feel the disc for Archaeopteryx. Wings wide. Not a lot of movement. This shot goes up nice and early. Cars underneath that one, trying to make it done, and that is a great throw. Dropping right down him. Chris Carr, no issues. So, great work from Archaeopteryx. Just punishing instantly. And again, we see a pretty cheap turnover from AU Coast. Just not able to value possession sufficiently. The clouds are starting to come back over. The sun's disappeared. And the heavens are starting to break again. The rain has arrived. We've just passed halfway here at 7-2, but that's all right. There's no half time here. Just a quick mirror. We're cramming in these pacey games. They're just coming in at a tight 45 minutes. Teams are playing multiple games across the day today, so it's interesting to see how different teams' tempo and intensity varies across multiple opponents of, you know, differing skill levels. Of course, the structure of the tournament being two very large pools and then cutting straight to semifinals. So uh, you've got to come top two in your pool if you want to shot at those medals. There's not a lot of space for inconsistency. So yeah. the ability of teams to continuously back up game after game and continue to play a high level, high quality ultimate will be what determines who is there at the pointy end of this tournament. As you see another brick sail well into the other field. Of all the differences between turf and sand, frisbee fields, it's the size and the effect that that's had in pulling that may be the most obvious. We've seen so many bricks today. Yeah, I think it's just... Oh, McAlpine goes to the really early shot. O'Day's underneath it. Can't get there despite the best his efforts. McAlpine really not making it e easy for his receivers. He's just putting a lot of spice on these. He needs to just calm his farm a bit and put a little more love on them. As the shot goes back the other way, Archaeopteryx has it. And Parsonen on the under that, uncovered. And he got in the end zone. And that is clinical as you like. 8-2 extinction. Wow, showing that they've got a much more refined long game than this AU Coast team. It's really just a case of throwing skill. The, the shape of the throw is just providing a much bigger margin for error. Instead of blading in hot, it's slightly raised front lip of the disc will allow it to sit just a touch and allow your player to run onto it. And in the end, Lennon, not realizing Gordon was streaming through behind, doesn't drop off to play defense, allowing for the easy dish from Parson to Gordon. Yeah, could have used a little more sideline chat on that one. Of course, the play there, drop off and cover the end zone threat. There's no point putting a mark on someone who's just going to throw it to an open end zone anyway. So Extinction, look at keep rolling here. Got about 10 minutes left in this game, and they've got a really nice buffer here. So AU Coast really need to stamp their authority on the offensive side of this game. Yeah. 
Reese McAlpine raises his hand above his head, indicating his readiness. So far this game, AU Coast has lived and died by his sword. That's all right, he's doing a great job. He's able to get the disc here. And he's looked longs again, and that's just yet another spicy blade. But this one, a lot, little more touch on it. O'Day's got it out the front of the end zone. That's much nicer from AU Coast. Finds Moxie open in the front corner. And that's a goal for AU Coast. It's been a while between points, but they finally managed to connect on one of those deep shots. Mikhail Pine not being dissuaded by his earlier turnovers, continuing to take the shots when they're opening up for him. And is finally rewarded with a connection downfield. Yeah, they can't adjust their game too much, even if he feels a bit off and he hasn't been connecting on those. He can't just fade away from the long shots, you know, because even if that hasn't been connecting, it is something that works and you don't just want to abandon that weapon in your arsenal because then all of a sudden Extinction's only guarding unders and you're having a very, very hard time. So as much as you want to play a bit more conservatively, you can't just stop and do what you're doing entirely. As they finally get a shot at defense here. So it's a bit of a different pace for them. Would love to see them pull something interesting out here. Yeah. Classic beach zone, go all, all your eggs in one basket so you can count them in one go. Very high risk, high reward, but it's the kind of play they need to be making here, you know. There's Extinction haven't looked troubled by this AU defense, particularly after a quick turn. Uh, so maybe they can do something differently or really just trust themselves to be able to get it done with Extinction coming off the pool here. As that's a quite a nice one. It's going to hang and land well deep into the end zone. Fielded by Yap to Barnes, back to Yap. Looks like match defense again. Annie Gordon completely free and under again. Finds Kidd on the far sideline. Kidd looks long, shoots late in the count. Car underneath with a great read. And oh man, AU Coast could have talked to their man. He was dropped, the throw was dropping short. He could have cut that one out. Just wasn't aware that the disc was soaring his way. And Extinction 9 3. And AU Coast look like they might be rolling out of game here as Extinction shows no signs of slowing. Kid absolutely fearless as he fires from the hip down that line. <laughs> fires deep and late but as you say in the end it connects. Extends yeah. this lead to six. Yeah if he takes that shot the first time instead of hesitating then it's leading his receiver out perfectly sits in front of him as opposed to that which was quite lucky not to get deed by the AU player. Credit to Prahalad, he was right on car as a defender in pretty good position. But as we say, not quite the communication there to help him get that block. And the time remaining in this game is rapidly ticking away. And the mountain left for AU Coast to climb is just getting bigger. Yeah, they need to be cleaning up their offense. If they can't come out and Put in some good offense as his shot goes up again. McAlpine changing his strategy, putting this one out to the International Space Station and it goes straight to Bersonen. Finds Villas in the middle here. Just back around to Passanen. Doesn't like what he sees upfield. Takes a really long shot and that is asking a lot of his receivers. Really doesn't want to do the work himself but is happy to send other people to go running for the disc. And McAlpine will bring the disc in again for AU Coast. Not a bad shot by Passone, really, in that his, de his uh, receiver had steps. Mm. But maybe that's an example of a throw that would look beautiful on turf, where they're able to quickly get up to top speed and cover a lot of distance. But on sand, just way too out, far out in front. Yeah, I yeah. might describe that one as a bit of an educational throw. If you build it, they will come. If you throw it, they will run. And Passone, and again, with a short field to work out front of the end zone. Goes to Villas in the middle. Villas and Poseidon and playing a bit of a two-person game at the moment. Oh, and fires one straight down the middle. It in. Very nicely done. And that's a commanding lead for Extinction. 10-3 as we go into the last five minutes of the game here. So AU's going to be able to put a run on this game and really get them feet onto themselves. It's got to happen now. But the body language doesn't look like it today. They do look a little tired, both in their body language and in their running when they're out there. A full day of beach frisbee can really take it out of your legs. 
it's a, it's a pretty unique kind of burn that you get from working hard in a beach frisbee match. Yeah, nice and low impact though. Really good on the joints and the knees and the ankles, but uh, makes your muscles go like nothing else. Obviously, you're a very experienced beach player yourself, Rob. Pulling on the green and gold uh, in France. Yeah, it was a really good time. It's uh, playing for the Australian mixed team there. It was very, very incredible. Uh, truly an experience. Bit of a different conditions from here. Royan in France, of course, having changed out the sand for the surface of the sun. Uh, many players going to hospital on the first day for running on the sand. It was that hot. And the paramedic team working overtime on blisters. Controversial choice by the tournament organisers. Yeah, they probably should have had a little less sun, I reckon. But, oh. you know, they've taken on our feedback and brought it. What we desire here at the Gold Coast in these beautiful rainy grey skies. Perfect setting for AU Coast. O'Day putting it up. Aponte makes the bid. That was a lovely effort. Kid even applauding him afterwards, saying, if you'd held on to that, good on you. But he can't hold on to it, it turns out. Yeah, it was nearly really good. Instead, instead ends up being kind of bad. That's all right. And so Extinction just have been ruthless after the turn. AU Coast looking like they're trying really hard in their offense, but just not able to really make a dent in this Extinction offense after the turn. And off and running here. Royal with a disc in the center. Looking for Yap, doesn't reset. Goes to Carr. Carr taking his time. Looks off the open of Kid. Vili's going long. Shots on. And it goes up big. Oh, and that's the kind of distance he won on it. Vilis had the pace and the separation. Cutting deep late in the count. And Carr with a presence of mind to look and give it exactly the right amount of source that it needed. Extinction. 10-3 up. 11-3 now. Vilis, just a total workhorse for this Extinction team. He just does not stop. Uh, he's been providing undercuts all game long, using his pace to great effect. And there, mixes it up, heads to the end zone, generating heaps of separation, making it easy for Carr, who, as you said, Rob, throws the beautiful throw onto his chest. Yeah, and I think because that one came uh, quite late in the count, Villas had started making his cut really early. He was screaming down that break side, but Carr didn't take the shot till really late. So Villas was already quite deep, which allowed Carr to put that spicy edge on it. Came down really quick, uh, rather than throwing really early and trying to float it out to him. And that's another throw that's perhaps more effective on sand than it is on turf. The kind of bullet onto the chest as opposed to the uh, huck out in front. Often it's just a case of dial in on your receiver, line it up and ping it at them and let them do the work of catching it. Hey look, if you can drop it in on a dime then you can do whatever you like. And that you coast looking to stabilise here as we're heading into the twilight of this game. McAlpine on the near side, fires the forehand across field, finds a channel straight through the center. Unreal, very creative vision there, but great work and great height from the AU coach receiver. Can't teach tall, and AU coast aren't done yet. They're still fighting. That takes it to 11-4. The end is in sight. Yeah, AU Coast need to, if they really want to make a game of it here at this late, they need to be able to start getting some blocks. They haven't been able to slow Extinction's offense um, later in this game. They can them some goals them themselves for remaining competitive, but I think it, they haven't been able to really get a bunch of blocks, especially when the Extinction offense is rolling here. Got a lot of versatile players, I think. It's hard to pigeonhole a lot of these Extinction players as either handlers or receivers. We've seen a lot of players working behind the disc and also then going deep for a bunch of goal so really makes them a handful for defenders a cut that we've seen a lot of uh, today is the the deep cut originating from the handler space it's something we see on grass as well but I think it's extra effective on these shorter fields uh, where it's difficult to turn quickly and react absolutely and if you get the disc put in a quick pump fake get your player to move and then dish it and sprint immediately you're basically starting with a one meter advantage which 
Can be all you need. This kid has the disc and goes around, finds yet another Annie Gordon completely free. Persona with a disc. Beautiful inside out, but that does not hold its edge and turns over. I think he wanted that to curl away from the camera and into the path of his receiver, and instead it went away. A little too much chili on that one. Well out in front, and McAlpine will retrieve the disc. Brings it in on this near sideline. The wind has died down, but earlier it was going away from the camera. But not much of a hint of a breeze anymore. Yeah, I think in this towards the end of today, this is of course the second last game slot of the day. We've got one more game after this before we pull up stumps. McAlpine, no options. Looks like it's going. Oh, and he shoots to the under, but just a bit too much spice and unable to close her hands around that. Yeah, Tierney was there, but not able to hold on. Could have put a little more love on it. Barnes will pick up the disc here. Oh, great shoulder shimmy, and that's an unbelievable block. McAlpine rushing to the disc, likes his option going deep, fakes it. He's really playing like he's got his back against the wall here, McAlpine. He wants it, and he really wants it. It's a persona, making his life tough. Melo finds Georgiadis. Doesn't have a whole lot happening downfield that looks great. A lot of cutters working hard, but often counterproductive to each other. As McAlpine goes deep, Mello will find him. Oh, and that's a great falling away. Mello with catch it, plant the foot, and he's falling backwards. He's seeing the opportunity to shoot, and he puts it there straight away. So it's good to see from AU Coast, but they need to back it up again. They need to get some blocks here. A late stand as Archeoptrix struggles to close it out. Struggles to tie the bow on this game and finish it up. As they signal, signal that this point will be three women. Yeah, not a decision made or called, but just uh, reminding everybody it's hard to count two in a row sometimes. So Extinction coming out on offense here. It's a position they haven't been in in a while, but they've still got a very strong line. Seems like every one of these Extinction lines is full powered. AU Coast. Just managed to go two in a row here. Get, get them back to back, see if they can build this into a bit of a, a run of momentum. See if they can get another block. It starts with defensive intensity here. And the run now looks all right. Extinction off and running right now. Royal with a disc. Not got a lot of options. This is a great start. Manages to get that one moving. Bursting out to the disc. Back to Royal. Going up the sideline here. Ooh, start the with a disc. Out. And that's a turn, all right. It's a chance for AU Coast. Let's see what they can do. It was an aggressive shot, and then nice day. Aponte surveys his options downfield. I'll swing to O'Day. He looks so long. He's got eyes to the end zone. Looks away, but then goes back. Floats it. People underneath it. They will go up. And Ellen Armstrong, can't teach tall, has a four or five inch advantage and makes good use of it there. All right, 11-6. AU Coast not rolling over. It's good to see late in this game. They're really sticking it to him. Three in a row. Can they make it four? They've still got five points, the difference here. So it's quite a long distance for them to go, but <laughs> don't count them out. Crazier things have happened on a Frisbee field. McAlpine, all business. He's serious. Marshalling the troops. He still believes. That's what it's all about. Confidence and faith in yourself. Is that pool landing nicely in? It's nice short field. You don't need to be bricking it. That was really nice. Every one of these teams can be doing that. Yeah, bounces once. 
Six inches in from the back of the end zone. Perfect. Yep. Coming up to the line, Barnes with a disc here. Oh, shoots the inside, floats, McAlbone with a touch. Oh, and out the back, Kid tries to get under it, but centimeters away, and it wasn't even his. And Miller picks it up. He's got McAlpine underneath, but instead comes near sides to Georgie Arger, Georgie Artis. She'll go to Lennon. Lennon's got Miller deep, doesn't want it. Cutter's having to work very hard, but not able to provide a whole lot. And Carr cuts that one out. And he does it. That's a hospital pass. Lennon's underneath it. Kid's underneath it. It's what the people wanted, but it's not what AU Snow and Extinction deserved. So maybe they're slipping here, opening the door for a big AU run as the shot goes long, but it's very left. McAlpine with an incredible task. That would have had to be an absolute dime ball to make it that far and still give McAlpine a decent chance at it, as it was. Sailing away from the camera and just dying there. Car with the disc, extinction with a field to work. Kid in the center here. Gordon open on the inside. Oh, over the top, but Barnes there. All of her players are behind her. Car doesn't seem to give much of a rats and the shot goes up. Villas tracking it. Oh, and he goes early and he stumbles and he doesn't get it late, so. Makes a bit of a fool of himself there. He hangs his head in shame. He realizes that was a prime opportunity. And he had all the time in the world to take that easily. Instead, went aggressive and early. Well, looks like he might be calling an injury. He might have wingled or wangled himself a little bit. But that's all right. Eiko still looking strong here as we're going well past time cap now. Of course, game doesn't finish until... Miller. It's a game to 12 right disc. now. She'll f move it to the center. Mello in front of the bidding kid. Mello fires again. He has McAlpine on car. Now that's a matchup they'll take. McAlpine underneath it, tracking it across. Oh, Great bid. That's Great a hold. Grab. And that's a goal. They're amped about that. That's a great play from McAlpine. Keeps his feet down in the back of the end zone. Reaches up to get it. And they are amped about that. That's 11 7. AU coach with all the momentum right now, but. Mello. One game point, so Extinction just need one more point for the AU. Not ready to give it up just yet. Melo learning from his mistake, his early throw turned over too much and sat out the far side. The second one, he got the angle a little better. Flattened it out just enough so it stayed in. Still required a hell of an effort from McAlpine and one great play to keep it alive and score the goal. But adjusted enough and McAlpine delivered the play. The gap is now four, and it's right about now that if you're Extinction, you start to get second thoughts, you start to worry. You get the little voice in the back of your head saying, what if they do get another four in a row? What if we aren't able to close this one out? Look, if AU Coast are able to win this one, they will have bloody earned it. Extinction, I really just want to see something clinical. They've Look to do a bunch of fancy stuff, really win the game with their throws. I just want to see some grit and some grind here. No turnovers. Nice and boring offensive hold. Millie Yap believes in the team. And that pool's not going to help their cause for AU Coast. It was a brick on the far side. Moxie will put the force on using his big wingspan to his advantage as extinction in an interesting setup Gordon starting very deep working all the way under instead to kid on the near side he goes back for Sonnen and shoots the blade the defenders in the area oh and you guys have spoiled that one Moxie does enough yeah Gets there. Sims recognizes he's been beat there a little round of applause. It's good, uh, good respect to see that one. And here we go. O'Day's going to field the disc for AU Coast. Looking to keep this run up. If they can put this in without a turnover, they'll be only three points away from Universe. Oh, 
O'Day. See if he can pilot this offense back up the fiddle. Indicates the sideline, please step back because I've got a big backhand. I'm not afraid to use it. Yeah, he's been one of the shooters on this AU Coast team. And that oh, one, away would pass, Moxie! Can't quite hold on to it. Yeah, didn't have that first three steps of power. Passing and gets it, and then manages to finally ice the game. Gabby Hagen with a goal there, and that's it. So AU Coast making a valiant stand and really showing their worth to this extinction team, but unable to make up the massive deficit they had accrued. So we'll leave you with a very quick break now. We've got a, one more game slot today and then a whole other day of games tomorrow. Join us, I've been Rob Swan. I've been Max Stenstrom. And see you soon at the Australian Beach Ultimate Championships. Ulti.tv